Well, hi everybody. So today I'll be going over any builds P40F. We'll kind of have a look at it here real quick. We'll hop the cockpit, get everything started, take it off, do a short flight in it, and uh, then do a review on it. That'll pretty much be it for today. Well, here we are in the P40. And it looks honestly quite fantastic in here. There's nothing really wrong with it that I've found so far. Everything that's supposed to be smooth is relatively smooth, and everything that isn't isn't. There don't really seem to be any gaps beyond sort of what should be here in terms of the gaps for the canopy and things like that. But other than that, it looks absolutely fantastic. Again, the mirror doesn't work, but, you know, this is Microsoft Flight Simulator. So we're going to go ahead and run through the features here real quick and get this thing started and take it off. Alrighty. Well, we'll start out here with uh, opening up the canopy, because that is always nice when they include that. And then before we go through the tablet here, we're going to turn it on and off with this little knob down here. And when we turn it off, we get basically the mount for the gun sight, but not actually the gun sight. I'm not entirely sure why they didn't include the gun sight up here, but normally there should be a gun sight. So we're going to turn that off because that looks a little strange. And then we're going to come in here to the tablet. Now you can turn the tablet's power off with this button over here, and you can change the brightness of it over here as well. We have a map. Uh, that's pretty much all it is. All we'd have to do to get back to the home page is pretty much click on this little home icon down here. Then we have maintenance. Maintenance is where we'll, uh, we can open up the engine cowlings for the plane, we can open up the gun bays, we can toggle the guns on and off. All this is going to do is remove the barrels from the gun and remove what I'm going to call the iron sights here. Also have tie downs, oddly enough there aren't chocks, but we, there are tie downs. We can open the lower gun bay and all of that, so when we do all of these things, you can see the engine. The engine is actually modeled quite nicely, and we uh, have the ammo and everything in here for the guns. Now, for some reason, sometimes the ammo doesn't pop up in the gun bays. I'm not entirely sure why that happens, but either way. And then over here on the right side, we have our maintenance. So, as you can see, some of this plane has been worn in the amount of time that I've flown it, so all we have to do is click replace, and it will go ahead and repair everything in here. Now, even though there is wear and tear, there does not seem to actually be engine damage on this thing. So you can pretty much run this thing at full throttle for as long as you want. It doesn't seem to actually damage the motor or anything like that, so you don't really have to worry about it overheating or anything. That said, I'm not entirely sure what happens if you run this thing out of oil and continue to fly it. So I haven't flown it enough to figure that one out. I will test that out and see what happens, but it's not going to be for this review. So we'll go ahead and go back to the home page. Then we have weather and the timer. I'm not really going to go through those two. And then we have the settings. If you don't want to deal with the maintenance, you can just go ahead and toggle it on and off from this screen. And uh, civilian and military, again, just going to swap out the guns and the iron sight for no guns and no iron sight. So we'll come back here. We also have the radio, which is not going to show up because the plane is off. Now, the radio is just a comms radio. There is no way to do VOR on this thing. So for the most part, navigation is going to be dead reckoning or you're going to kind of cheat here on the map with your flight plan. But other than that, that is pretty much it for the features here, so we're going to go ahead and get this thing started. Alrighty. Well, we'll go ahead and move the mixture here up to rich. We'll select a, a fuel tank. It does not really matter as long as it has fuel in it. We'll go ahead and turn the battery on. We'll turn the generator on. We'll turn the magnetos over here to both. We'll turn the fuel pump on. And we do not need to prime it, but the primer switch is over here if you want to. And then we'll go ahead and flip the starter switch here, and it'll start on up. And that's pretty much it. So the P40's running. I will say I think the heat effect here is kind of neat, yet somewhat excessive. Uh, it looks a little a little excessive to me, but any, either way, this does not actually happen when you're flying. This really only happens when you're sitting here kind of still on the ground. So we've got everything running here, so we're going to go ahead and head out to the grass and take this thing off. Alrighty. Well, as far as taxiing this thing goes, it's really pretty easy to taxi. The tail wheel is pretty much tied to your rudder, so it's not a free caster tail wheel or anything like that. I have not ground looped this thing. It's, it doesn't seem to be something that it really does. As far as warbirds go, this is probably the easiest one to take off and to land so far in Microsoft Flight Simulator, which might be a little disappointing. I tend to think if warbirds aren't trying to kill you on takeoff, something's not quite right. So we'll go ahead and release the parking brake here and begin to throttle up. We will want to pull back on the stick at least a little bit to help keep the tailwheel grounded until we get to about 65 miles an hour. Or 60. 60 or 65. We want to release that pressure just a little bit once we get there and the nose should come down. And about the time we get to around about 90, we want to begin pulling back on the stick. We should lift off around about 100. 
I'm gonna put the gear up. Now, as far as how this thing flies, I've, I've quite enjoyed flying it around here lately. Or at least for the day that I've had it. Now, it has a pretty good climb rate. It turns a pretty nice circle. It does not bleed too much speed, surprisingly, in the circle. So, you can turn a pretty tight turn and not, not bleed that much speed. It has an okay roll rate. The roll rate seems a little bit slow to me. But that might just be me. Now, as far as how it stalls... It has an okay stall characteristic. It, it, at the very least, it doesn't look right. It will kind of dip the wing. It will put you into a spin. The spin is incredibly easy to get out of. You pretty much just have to recenter the stick. You're not going to have to counter it with any rudder or anything like that. And if you really want it to continue to spin, just keep holding back on the stick, and it'll it'll just keep spinning for you. Now, as far as the stall speeds go, with the flaps down, you're looking at something about 59 miles an hour. With them up, you're looking at something about 75. Now this thing has a very, very weird behavior to it if you push the stick too far forward or you pull it too far back. So we'll just push the stick too far forward and it does that. It'll do the same thing if we pull the stick back. Uh, it seems to be more prevalent when you are pushing the stick forward than pulling it back. But either way, it is kind of a, a weird characteristic. It really gives the plane this feeling of being unbalanced. But other than that, in terms of actually flying it, it's not something that you run into very often, so just kind of be gentle with, you know, the input, the pitch inputs, and you probably won't run into it. Otherwise, it's an incredibly stable plane to fly. It doesn't really seem to have that much of a torque effect to anything. It doesn't really roll to the left very much or anything like that. And it will pretty much do what you want it to do, barring what just happened. The one surprising thing about it that I did notice is that it does seem like it has a very low G load that it can handle. It, I'm not entirely sure what it is because I don't have a Jeep meter here, but it did seem fairly easy to overstress the airframe with this thing. Again, neither one of those problems I think are, are too big of a deal. You probably won't run into them, and it certainly doesn't have any problems doing loops and all of your sort of normal maneuvers that you do anyway. And overall, it is still a pretty fun plane to fly. So I will see you all back here in a second when I come in for a landing. Alrighty, well, we'll go ahead and put the flaps and the gear down. You will want to be below about 175 miles an hour before you do that. The gear and the flaps do not seem to have too much of an effect on the drag of the plane. I do have a pretty good effect on its lift, but it doesn't seem to drag it too much. So we'll want to come in here about 100 to 110 miles an hour. I'll probably want to stay a little bit under about 2,000 RPM to maintain about 110 miles an hour. just back the throttle off here and kind of set itself down. Good speed to kind of touch down at is about 75 miles an hour. Anything above 90 kind of tends to have a, a pretty bad bounce. Of course that wasn't exactly the smoothest landing, but either way we'll go ahead and pull the stick back to ground the tailwheel and we'll get on the brakes here. Now it does not nose plant itself hardly at all. About the most you'll ever get out of it seems to be about like that. But either way, it's a pretty fun plane to fly. It's pretty pretty easy to land and take off here. So that's pretty much it for this part. So I'm going to go into the review here, and that'll be it for today. Alrighty, well, AnyBuilds P40 is available at AnyBuilds.com. It's about $18 or $19. The short version is it's not bad for under $20. Bucks. It has a pretty decent set of features. It looks good, it sounds okay, and it flies pretty good. The model and texture quality are quite fantastic. The interior looks great. There's nothing wrong with it. If there is, I missed it. The exterior is pretty much the same as the interior. The exception to that is the instrument panel is not modeled and textured completely from the exterior view. You, you can pretty much see through the gauges and everything. However, from the default exterior camera angle, you won't see it. The sound quality is pretty good, the high point being the engine sound effects. There is a slight problem with the engine sounds. You can hear the sounds kind of loop. At least at the time of recording this, there has been an update that has improved that dramatically in the cockpit. Unfortunately, it is still noticeable in the exterior view, 
but either way it is better than day one. The low point of the sound effects, in my opinion, are the landing gear and the flap sound effects. The gear being the worst of the two, when you put the gear down, it almost sounds like tires chirping instead of sounding mechanical or anything like that. The switch sound effects are okay, but overall sound quality is, is okay. It might be a little quiet. But other than that, I really don't have any problems with the sounds other than what I mentioned, and, and those really aren't sound quality problems as much as they are sound effects that don't sound quite right. The flight model is certainly fun to fly. It rolls okay. The roll rate might need to be increased a little bit, but that might just be me. It climbs okay. It actually does turn a pretty tight circle. I covered this earlier in the video. It has a kind of a strange pitch behavior to it, which when it happens makes the plane seem incredibly unbalanced. There is an example of this in the miscellaneous section or chapter or whatever you call it, in case you missed it. The stall characteristic isn't bad. It will at least put you into a spin. It's by no means the best stall characteristic I've seen in Microsoft Flight Simulator, but it's not the worst. I was a little surprised by how easy it was to break the airframe. Not a complaint though, it's just a limitation you'll have to figure out. The last thing on the flight model is that part of me thinks it might be a little bit too well behaved on the ground. I hardly have to use any rudder to keep it straight, barring a crosswind or something like that. That might be how the P-40 is, I don't know, I've never flown one. I just think it should be a little bit more squirrely on takeoff. I mean, the real one has 1600 horsepower, and I know that's kind of on the low end of World War II fighters, but still. The features for this plane are pretty good, especially for its price. It is pretty rare to see fully modeled engines and whatnot on planes under $20, and I was pleasantly surprised by the maintenance section, but a little disappointed there isn't any engine damage. It looks like it takes about 7-8 to eight hours to run the oil down to zero, but I'm not sure what that means. I guess it could just mean that it needs an oil change, or that it's burned up all the oil and it's going to seize up. I don't know. As far as tire wear goes, it looks like it's going to take a pretty good number of landings before that becomes a problem. But again, I don't know what that really means. I think I need close to like seven hours to really test those things out. I haven't spent that much time in this plane. And they don't really tell you in the manual, or I missed it. So overall, I've had a lot of fun flying this one, and for the money, it's not that bad. I would suggest at least having a look at it. You don't have to buy it or anything like that, but... It's really not that much more expensive than any of the Reno planes, and at least all of its gauges are right side up. So it's got that going for it. And that's pretty much it for today, everybody. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.